Hello, so as we go into a new week, um, there may be moments that um, you need to capture yourself that perhaps you'd normally come into the studio or see a photographer to do. Okay, so I have clients that come in and they may have photo shoots at certain age intervals. So they might be like newborn, they might do three months, six months, a year. It's entirely up to them. Uh, it's very much tailored to, to their needs. Sometimes people will just have you know, newborn and then a fir the first birthday, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, different people like different different things. And they, it depends on really, I think, um, on how much they're capturing themselves, you know, um, with their phones or their cameras, that kind of thing. But because of the situation that we're in at the moment and the lockdown and um, people not being able to have photo shoots, it means that um, they're either missing moments or they're going to they're having to try and capture them themselves. OK, so I would say, you know, it's better to capture them yourself, even even though if you think you're rubbish at it, uh, than it is to miss a moment. All right. So I'm going to give you some tips today on some things that you can do or that might help you if you need to do your own little photo shoot at home. All right. Now, obviously, it's going to depend on the age of your little one. OK, if you've got a newborn baby, OK, it's going to be very different from if you've got a two year old who's hurtling around at high speed. But I just thought I'd just give you a few pointers, OK, uh, which might help you out. If you need any more help than that, uh, then then there are things that you can do. OK, but uh, but for now, here's some free help. All right. So first thing I made a little list. OK, so first thing to think about is what would you like ideally? OK, so. You know, if it's a newborn um, baby, OK, you might want to capture the size, that sort of, you know, that new tiny little thing, tiny little hands, tiny little feet. Use your hands in their finger and things like that to give you a sense of, sense of scale. OK, the advantage of a baby that isn't moving is you can move them around. All right. So you can look, in, look around your room and go, well, OK, where is a good spot? You know, where is, you know, where's where's the nice light? We'll get onto that stuff in a minute. You know, where isn't there a load of washing behind behind them in the back of the shop? That kind of thing. Yeah. So think about what you'd like. OK, uh, keep it simple, because I find if I go into a photo shoot with with, with kids and I remember I've been doing this for probably like, you know, 19, 20 years, something like that. Um, if I go in there with too many fixed ideas, it just doesn't happen. You have to kind of um, go with it a little bit. All right. OK, so don't go in with two. We think no, don't look up interesting thing. Right. I'm going to do all these kind of shots. OK, with my little one, uh, because quite often it doesn't work out that way. OK. And the more relaxed you are, the more the better it's going to go. All right. So if you've got too many fixed ideas, you can all get a bit stressy. So, you know, keep it as simple as possible and just sort of see what happens. OK, so. The next thing you need to think about is space, okay? If it's a newborn, you can move them around. You don't need a lot of space. If you've got a two-year-old who's leaping around like a loony, then you need a little bit more space, okay? Maybe you've got a garden, okay? Maybe you could do it on your daily exercise. If you've got a little park near you that is very quiet, you know, you could probably take some pictures of them playing, all right? So think about where you might do this, you know, this little photo shoot, okay? Um, so think about space. If you've got a, a room, maybe, you know, obviously don't injure yourself moving furniture around, but sometimes you might have, you might want to move a coffee table or move a sofa over or something like that. OK, um, so have a little bit of a think about it. OK, um, now when you're thinking about it, you probably want to take into consideration the light. All right. So think about the light. So what you don't want, say you've got patio doors, you don't want that behind the kids. OK, because then they're going to be silhouette. The, ca the camera is going to struggle. You really want that light from the window onto them. OK, the more even the light, the better. So in the studio, I have two studio lights that kind of balance each other out. OK, um, in at home, you don't have to have lights. You can use natural light. OK, but be aware of where the light is. OK, so if the lights behind them, it's not going to work so well. If the lights on them, that's going to be better. OK, but you don't want harsh sunlight. You want quite nice natural light. So today here is very cloudy. That is like perfect. Perfect indoors or outdoors. OK, so you could be by a window and it's not too harsh. OK, um, if it was really bright and sunny, even on the video here, you'd see this side because the light, the window is here for me, uh, would be a lot, lot brighter than this. So it's not too bad. It's a little bit lighter than this side. All right. But it's noticing the light. All right. And what you can do is if you've got little ones that um, aren't very patient and stuff like that, it's just just notice, put something there, put a chair there where you think it might be right. Just notice, take a picture of the chair. How does it come out? OK, um, so you can do that kind of thing. All right. Um, so notice the light. If you're outside in the garden or in a park, pick a cloudy day. Don't pick a really bright, sunny day because that is really harsh. And it's really tricky. All right. Um, so pick a nice, even light kind of day. Right. 
Now think about props, okay? If you've got little ones that want to be doing stuff, okay? Maybe they're, you know, they're one, they've got toys. If they're doing something, they're more still. So um, think about, um, you could get, um, you could order a new toy, something that's new, that's going to keep their interest. You Maybe they've got a favourite toy. Maybe you want to clear out, make sure it's not too many things because they kind of go from one to the other. Um, but something for them to do, even if it's a box, you know, <laughs> a box with a load of wrapping paper, something, anything in it, they're in pulling stuff out. Uh, they are really, they like that. OK, so it's something that's going to engage them for it so they sit still will make your life a lot easier. OK, um, obviously, little tiny babies, that's absolutely fine. But it's when they're high speed, crawling at high speed is a bit more tricky. Um, I, you know, in the studio, you might see me put I put babies in a box, like a wooden crate or in a little suitcase. It just and then you put stuff in with them and then they're interested in that for a, if for a very short amount of time. You've got to work quick, uh, but it means that they're there for a bit. Maybe they've got books, maybe they're like sitting and looking at books with you. OK, um, maybe it's things like that. So think about what they like, what might keep them interested. Sometimes it's food. OK, um, but yeah, so think about that. OK. So think about props and what you might want to include, okay? Don't overcomplicate it. Again, keep it as simple as you can, all right? Yeah. Now, with kids that are on the move, okay, um, you want to set up shots, okay? Get them involved in doing something. So in the studio, I use balloons. Um, you can use a ball, you know, whatever you want to do. But, but stage it. So rather than just them leaping all over the place, which will be harder for you than it will be for me, because I've had a lot of practice, um, you keep it quite simple. So if they're putting things in a box or in a basket or something like that, if they're doing something, you know, at a certain point, they're going to be, you know, putting it in the thing. It's like with kids on swings, you know, if you've got a swing in the garden, at the upswing and at the front and back is the point where they're the slowest. It goes like that fast. And then just before it changes direction, that's just kind of like the slowest point. So those are the points to get your shot. So it's thinking about, thinking things through a little bit. It's having a little bit of a plan. Although you want it to look natural, it's having a little bit of a plan and staging some things. So it may be like setting up, saying, right, we're going to play these games. And this is what we're going to do. And this is the first one. So they're in the, the right position for you in terms of the light and things like that so that you can get the shots that you want. All right. Now, I know it's a lot to think about. And it's a lot to do, but it's 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 being a little bit organised, really. And um, and, as, you know, thinking about the light and taking some test shots of things without the kids in it. So, you know how it's going to come out. Um, and then you can just have fun with it, yeah? Have a, have a bit of a blast, um, you know, and see what happens, all right? Um, and don't worry if they're not as good as you think that they you want them to be because it's capturing that moment. It's capturing your kids, your babies, as they are now in this moment, okay? And we can't go back to that moment again. That's the kind of the, the, the critical thing, really, is we've got to capture them now. Um, so give it a go, okay? If you've got older kids, it's a lot easier. Uh, you can get them involved, you know, you can... Uh, they can you know do different things if they've got hobbies and things it's incorporating that into the pictures who are they now in this moment uh, and what do you want to capture you know so give it a go all right if you get horribly stuck obviously I can't say come into the studio and take a picture because we can't do that at the moment uh, but you could book a, a 30 minute lesson okay and with a 30 minute lesson what happens is you can email me pictures that you've taken and you say it isn't work this isn't working or blah 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 what can I do to make it better okay and it doesn't matter you don't have to be like you know, a really serious photographer to have a lesson anybody can book a lesson with me so they're getting my help my advice with the pictures that they want to take and that's whether it's for, you know with your, the family of the kids the babies the pets you name it pictures for work whatever it is I'm here to help and I'm not scary it's all very friendly and I just just want to help you get the best out of your camera um, with whatever you're doing all right so if you've got if you're stuck and you need a bit of extra help and want to book a session like that then just send me a message all right and we'll get it booked in uh, it's 20 pound for half an hour if you want three sessions it's 50 for the three and you can space them out so actually if you do the first lesson you think oh actually I really enjoyed that I'd like to do some more then you can do it's all very flexible like that okay you're not signing yourself up for a whole load of stuff all right so that's me I hope that really helps um, so yeah have fun capturing the moments okay don't miss them all right because uh, time does absolutely fly by and there's nothing you know nothing worse than looking back and thinking oh I wish I'd taken some pictures of that I wish I'd taken some pictures of the kids doing this um, or do you remember when you know if there's pictures it's, it's much nicer because when they've grown up you can show them the pictures as well okay so that's me lots of tips lots of information in 10 minutes okay but you know as I say if you get stuck give us a shout all right take care bye